Hello everyone, my name is Blackwatch and welcome to another episode of How To Play. In this week's episode we're going to be taking a look at Marius Stryker, also known as Jaeger. He was the absolute king of roamers for the longest time in Siege, but unfortunately, in this latest season, he's kind of been usurped by Ella. Now this video is going to show you one, how to play him a little bit better hopefully, and two, why he's just as good if not better than his Polish alternative. Let's have a look. So Jaeger is a one armor, three speed operator on the defending side and he is a member of the GSG-9 CTU alongside his compatriot Bandit on the defending team and his attacking teammates IQ and Blitz. Now he has access to two primary weapons, the 416C Carbine which is one of the best if not the best weapon on the defending side and the 870 MCS Shotgun which is a pretty good shotgun to be honest it's one of the more fun ones a lot of the memes that you'll see on the subreddit are to do with the 870 rush which is people going as the gsg9 recruit and just sprinting into rooms with that shotgun equipped it's a real piss take weapon but it's surprisingly good especially with the laser sight so if you want to muck about with that go for it but if you really want to get the most out of jaeger and properly sweat and try hard like he's intended to be played the 416 is going to be sitting in your infantry and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. His sidearm is the P12 pistol. It's it's fine. It's like an in-between between the P9 for the GIGN and the uh, the Sig Sauer, whatever it's called in the game. I think it's the P226 for the SAS. It's a sort of bridge gun between those two and it's, it's pretty good. Reasonably high capacity. Okay damage, you know, as a pistol. You're going to be using your carbine most of the time anyway because it's got such a high ammo capacity. His secondary gadgets are the barbed wire spools. You have two of these where Bandit has three, so a bit of a downside playing as Jaeger versus Bandit in that, but it's a small price to pay. And the other one is the deployable shield, which I wouldn't recommend. It's uh, very situational, and considering you're going to be a roamer, you're not going to get much use out of it. His primary gadget and his big long thing, <laughs> could have phrased that better, is the ADS Mark IV Magpie Automated Defense System. So Automated Defense System is what ADS stands for. If somebody calls out ADS during a match, they're talking about your gadget. Now this is designed to intercept projectiles, particularly grenades and Ash's Breaching Round. So these are the things that it catches, and when it catches them, it destroys them completely. They have no effect once they've been hit by the gadget, they're just null and void. He has three of these, he can deploy them on any surface, that can be any wall, any floor, any barricade if you're so inclined, which you absolutely shouldn't be, please don't place these on barricades. And don't place them on non-reinforced walls, and try and avoid placing them on reinforced walls. They have two charges per ADS, so it will destroy two projectiles per ADS. So if you have a cluster charge that's launched through a floor or, well, not a floor, but a ceiling or whatever, the ADS will intercept two of the cluster grenades. The rest of them will be detonated as normal. So his strengths as a character are in sort of three different categories, I'd say and uh, a lot of it's to do with the fact that he is just a very effective roamer and that's because obviously he's fast he has a very very good weapon and his gadget is quite simple it's very effective and it's almost always going to be useful you'll pretty much guarantee yourself at least 20 or 30 points from this gadget now you don't get any for deploying it but you get 10 for every projectile intercepted so all you got to do at the start of the round is place these down in fortified locations so don't put it too close to a wall because it can be destroyed by reinforcements. Keep an eye out for shock wires because it can be destroyed by bandit shock wire. And don't place it in anywhere too obvious. Uh, definitely don't place it onto barricades because it will almost always be destroyed. It's a very, very silly idea. Try and aim for floors that are in levels of cover but are still going to be close enough to a point where an attacker would throw a grenade in and uh, you'll maximise your effectiveness with this gadget. So all of these things add up. He's fast, great gun, decent gadget that can be dropped down and he's pretty easy to learn. But his weaknesses are that on hostage he might not be the best choice because you'll want those grenades to roll in and kill the hostage so that you win the round. 
But at the same time, with the use of non-lethals increasing in the game, it's also maybe still worth bringing him and uh, placing those ADSs as you normally would. He doesn't have ACOG anymore, which is a bit of a downside, but that's the case with every 3-speed operator in the game now, so it's not really that much of a downside specific to him. The ADS time on his 416 is quite long, but considering the damage you're getting, considering everything else, it's still not that big of a downside. And that's one of the summations I have for Jaeger, is that he's got fairly minimal weaknesses for his positives. And that makes him a very, very strong choice on defense, um, even against Ella. Ella's great and all, but her gun's pretty inaccurate now. And her gadget, whilst it can be used to set up ambushes and such, is still, you know, it's on an equivalent power level with the ADS, I'd say. And in some situations, you're going to sit there and you think, oh, Christ, that ADS saved my life because a grenade that may have killed your teammate or yourself didn't. Whereas you're not really going to get that with Ella's Concussions Mines. It's more, well, I snagged the kill. So you've got to sort of value what you think is more important differently and just, you know, apply your own opinions to what you think is more important. And that's survivability versus kill profit. So my advice with the ADS is still stands. And also with any roamer, it's a good tip to basically just expedite your setup time as much as possible you want to spend the least amount of time setting up at the start of the round so that you can go and get into position somewhere in the map you just got to pick a location you want to be at when the round starts get all your stuff done and get to there as soon as possible you don't want to be traveling there when the prep phase is finished because it's a very good way to get killed by attackers who spawn near a location you may be running by um, it's a horrible thing to happen. It's unfortunate when it does happen. So just make sure you're thinking where you're going to place your gadget and get it done as quickly as possible. Reinforce those walls as quickly as possible and just communicate with your teammates. Let them know where you're going to go, where you're going to place stuff so that you can expedite that setup and get out and roam more effectively, contribute more to the team. So the biggest thing I can give you in terms of playing Jaeger effectively in terms of moving around the map and things like that is that you should really just learn the maps first. That's the same with most of the roamers in the game. The more effectiveness you get out of them is almost entirely based around your map knowledge because their biggest strength is being able to jump in, deal damage and get out very quickly. And that's what you want to do with Jaeger. You want to be as slippery as possible and you want to profit. So profit is, for example, if you were to run into a situation, you find one person, you get two rounds off on them. That's not a lot of damage, but say you get away and you've not been tagged once, that's still a profitable exchange. You've taken no damage and you've dealt damage to them. They might not be getting killed, but it's still something that's worth doing and it's something that's going to help your team out in the long run because that damage could lead to a kill down the line. Another thing that wouldn't be a good trade or wouldn't be good profit is if you die while stealing more damage. So if you manage to hit somebody four times and they've got about one tick of health left and you die, that's still a bad trade because if you'd been alive and you could jump back, you could potentially deal two bullets of damage to every member of the enemy team. That's still better than nearly, very, very nearly killing someone in the enemy team and dying yourself. It's much more important that you stay alive and continue to harass the enemy team to the point where they're constantly looking behind themselves, they're constantly second guessing their position, that that kind of psychological warfare is something that roamers are perfect for. And obviously getting any tangible damage out of that or any kind of kills or anything like that is great, but it's the slowdown that is half the battle for roamers because the longer it takes them to get to an objective and push your anchors, the more chance you have of winning the round because it's momentum that wins rounds for attackers. If they can push the momentum in their favor and slam an attack, they're probably gonna win. If you can push it in your favor by slowing the pace down, forcing them to push late and make mistakes, you've done your job effectively as a Jaeger. So that's my main tip, guys. That's pretty much all I can really offer to you today. I've gone massively over time on the gameplay, so I do apologise if you end up seeing some uh, previous gameplay in this particular video. I'm assuming I'm probably going to be showing something like, uh, I don't know, 
some shield gameplay or something like that. Actually, it won't be shield gameplay. Let's say we show some gameplay of Thermite, because I like Thermite. And uh, yeah, just apologies for that going over. I recorded the video a lot earlier and didn't think I was going to go over six minutes in the video, but now I'm sitting here 10 minutes in and realizing that to get the most effective guide for Jaeger, I needed a bit more time than just over six minutes. So I do apologize for that. I don't like having to use thumbnails as the background. So yeah, I'll give you some thermite footage or something. But in any case, guys, I will be having two more videos pre-made and ready to go in time for whenever you're going to be looking to enjoy the content. <laughs> um, basically, the problem I had was actually trying to get the uploads to function. So my Xbox is my main machine when it comes to recording everything and putting it all together and I was having some trouble but now I've figured out a workaround so I can get footage onto the laptop to be processed so the next thing is just recording voice getting it sorted getting it uploaded but I've got two thumbnails ready and therefore a how to play shields and a how to play cap can so how to play shields is going to be breaking down all three shield operators in the game and just general techniques and getting the most out of shield operators in sort of general terms and then i'll probably come back to each individual shield operator down the line and focus on their specific strengths and weaknesses in what will more than likely be a little bit shorter videos than normal for how to play but it will still cover all the fundamentals of the character it just won't be talking about general technique with shields because that's something i can cover in the other video basically so it's going to be talking about things like shield snaps it's going to be talking about things like positioning and the next video for uh for you guys will be the capcan video after the shield video goes up more than likely although it might be the other way around we'll see um i constantly keep trying to throw out predictions of what the next video is going to be and uh, i'm consistently wrong so those ones will definitely be the next two i cannot guarantee the order and the next one after that is potentially, don't trust me on this one, going to be a Valkyrie video. And there was a request from someone on Reddit, I think they were called It's Snow. Uh, I have a Valkyrie clutch from a long time ago. It's about five minutes long. It's been sitting in my clips for a long time and I really want to get some use out of it. So this seems like a good opportunity. Anyway, sorry for the little creative rant there, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the guide. If you've got, if you've made it this far, congratulations. I do apologise if I've ended up throwing a thumbnail at you, but hopefully I either get some fresh Jaeger footage for you to watch or I've given you something else to watch whilst I'm rambling on about all this. But in any case, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support you give me on this channel. And it's just great to be back in Vegas. Don't know why I said that. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Dos vidanya. I've been Blackwatch. Bye. Four eliminated. Friendly mission successful.